duck sheet of ice. Cold and heck, right? Okay, now that we've gone over the parts of the adrenaline, what we want to do now is actually talk about proper hand placement, mouth placement, tongue placement, and then we're going to cover operation of the call. So let's talk about holding the adrenaline. Properly holding the adrenaline is going to be one of the most important parts of properly blowing the adrenaline. Reason for this is because before we can even operate the call, we have to pick the call up and hold it. And hand placement is very crucial because that's what's going to help us control our back pressure. So let's talk about holding the call. What we want to do is I'm going to take the call and I'm going to place it between my thumb and my pointer finger, right there in the webbing of my hand. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my thumb and my pointer finger and I'm going to lay my pointer finger over the call and then I'm going to wrap my thumb on top of the pointer finger, okay? Now what this is allowing me to do is now I've got a solid grasp of the call with just two fingers. Now these three fingers right here, this is actually what's going to help me control the back pressure on the adrenaline. So what I want to do is I'm going to lay these fingers over. Now this is where it gets a little tricky. You don't want to just lay these fingers over to where they're really tight on the call because what's going to happen is it's going to create too much back pressure and the call's not going to sound right. The best way to illustrate proper finger placement on the call is take a golf ball and what we want to do is we want to put a golf ball in the end of the goose call and then wrap those fingers around that golf ball. If you notice what's happened is, is we've got an arc, our fingers are kind of in an arc around the, the golf ball. Believe it or not, when I was actually learning to blow a short read, I would actually walk around with a golf ball in my hand to make sure that I was practicing that proper hand placement. Because what's going to happen is, is when we take that golf ball away, we want those fingers to maintain that same position. Okay? Now what that does is that's creating a little sound chamber. Because where that golf ball was, that empty space is going to give us a lot of good goose tone. And this is how we're going to control the back pressure on the call. Back pressure is very important, and once we get into making some notes, you'll kind of hear good back pressure versus bad back pressure. All right, we got our two fingers holding the call. Our three fingers are arced over to create that sound chamber. Now, what we want to do is we want to make sure while, while we're holding this call, we don't want the call to be angled down, okay? Because that's going to cause us problems with our back pressure, and we don't want the call arced up like this. We want to make sure that it is straight, and basically parallel to the ground. Along with the call being straight, you also want to pay attention to where on the call you're grabbing the call. Um, you want to be very consistent in this because if at one time you pick the call up and you're choked way back, um, what's happening is, is you're now putting the end piece too close to the end of your fingers and then you're creating again too much back pressure. Um, and, but at the same time, you don't want to hold too far out to where the call is uncomfortable or you don't have a good grip. Basically just grabbing right there at the very end, right where the, the, the bell curve is. You just want to wrap those fingers around it to have just a good, comfortable, snug grip. 